So far, we've talked about how to prove trapezoids using coordinates, and we've talked about the next step, which was parallelograms using coordinates of vertices. So we want to go to the next level of quadrilaterals. We don't want today to look at rectangles and rhombuses. Okay? Remember, rectangles and rhombuses are special kinds of parallelograms. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's start by defining what is a rectangle. So a rectangle, like we said, is a special parallelogram. So it's a parallelogram with all congruent angles. Now, we could actually take that and sort of change that definition a little bit and still be correct. I could say, instead of saying all congruent angles, I could say with all right angles. And I would still be correct in my definition. I can even change that a little more. I could say it's a parallelogram with one right angle. Because once we know it's a parallelogram, I would know that the opposite angles are congruent, so that gives me two right angles, and I know consecutive angles are supplementary, so that creates all of the angles being right angles. So it gives us a shortcut to that. Now, a way to show I have right angles? Well, how? what equation can I use to show I have right angles? So right angles, we can show using my slope formula, okay? I can use slope to show consecutive sides are perpendicular. Let's talk about that, that term consecutive. Let's draw a random figure here. So that's A, B, C, D. And we talked about opposite sides. Opposite sides would be A, B, and C, D. And then B, C, and A, D would be opposite. Consecutive would be one right after another. So A, B, and B, C are consecutive sides. And if they're perpendicular, there's my right angle. So that's how we can do this. Now, there is a catch, though. It has to be a parallelogram. So we have to show it's a parallelogram and then show it has a right angle in there. So we can't just say, hey, right angles, boom, done. You can, but that takes a lot. You'd have to say A, B is perpendicular to B, C. B, C is perpendicular to C, D. C, D is perpendicular to D, A. D, A is perpendicular to B, A. That's a lot of writing out everything. So what we tend to do is we just go, hey, let me prove it to parallelogram and then say one set of consecutive sides are perpendicular and I'm good to go. Okay? So... That's one of the easiest ways to prove it's a rectangle. There is another way to do this. The other way to do it is using one of the properties of a rectangle, which mentions about the diagonals. And this is something that we mentioned in class numerous times about the diagonals of a rectangle. What happens with the diagonals of a rectangle? They are congruent. Now, I can't just show the diagonals are congruent. My diagonals for this rectangle are AC and BD. I can't just say they're congruent and be done. That doesn't do it. Uh, what formula would I use to prove they're congruent? So congruent, same length, same distance. So I'm gonna use my distance formula to prove that the diagonals are congruent. But again, I can't just do that. I still have to know it's a parallelogram because the danger is the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are also congruent. So I can't just go, okay, my diagonals are congruent, I'm done. I have to say it's a parallelogram and the diagonals are congruent. Because if I just say diagonals are congruent, it could be an isosceles trapezoid as well. Okay, so that's why anytime I'm proving a parallel or proving a rectangle, I want to prove it's a parallelogram first and then finish off with the rectangle part. So let's try one out. 
Prove that this quadrilateral is a rectangle. So again, step one, I want to prove parallelogram. Okay. Which equation do I use to prove it's a parallelogram? At least one easy way to do that. So the easy way to do that is slopes. So I'm going to use the slope of AB, the slope of BC, the slope of CD, and the slope of DA. Go ahead and calculate those four slopes. Okay, so you've collected, you've calculated your slopes. What do we see to make this a parallelogram? What do I, what do these numbers tell me? Well, looking at these, I can see that AB and CD have the same slope. BC and DA have the same slope. So from this, I can now say AB is parallel to CD and BC is parallel to DA. That proves that it's a parallelogram, okay? I need one more piece to make sure it's a rectangle. So let's go ahead and call this a parallelogram. Therefore, A, B, C, D is a parallelogram because opposite sides are parallel. But that's not what we're trying to prove. We want to prove it's a rectangle. So when I look at this, I look for two sides that are um, perpendicular to each other, two consecutive sides, so one right after the other. So notice what happens. I'm just going to look at my first two sides, AB and BC. I know they're consecutive because they both hold point B, ver vertex B. So if I were to sketch my diagram of this, there's AB, BC. So there's my two consecutive sides. And notice, four-thirds, negative four-thirds. Opposite, negative and positive. Reciprocal, flip them over. So now I can say AB is perpendicular to BC. Therefore, parallelogram, I'm going to use my symbol for parallelogram, ABCD, and I can use that now because I've already shown it's a parallelogram is a rectangle because consecutive sides are perpendicular. And that's it, we've got our rectangle, okay? So the nice thing about a rectangle, I don't need to do any more calculations. Once I've got my slopes, I've got all the information I need. Okay, so let's take a look at another one. A rhombus. What makes a rhombus a special parallelogram? Well, a rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. Okay, so all the sides are congruent. Now, this makes our life a little easier because this makes it a little simpler to do than just go with the, than we did with the rectangle because you don't have to say as much information. But what formula will I use to prove sides are congruent? Again, congruent, I'm going to use my distance formula. Okay. So again, we want to prove it's a parallelogram first, but that's going to be pretty easy because think about it. If all four sides are congruent, then the opposite sides have to be congruent. Okay, so we can almost jump that over. In fact, technically, you could define a rhombus as a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. Um, makes it You could define a rectangle as a quadrilateral with four right angles. Uh, it's just a little harder to show the right angles. So you may even want to change this definition a little bit and say a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. 
that actually is an appropriate definition of a rhombus. Now, if I want to use the properties of a rhombus, I still need to prove it's a, a parallelogram. What do you know about the diagonals of a rhombus? The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. Now, this I have to be careful of because that this isn't the only figure that does that because this is also true in a kite, which is a figure we didn't really study a whole lot, but it's nice to know that, hey, there is this other figure. So if I just prove, hey, look, the diagonals are perpendicular, that doesn't prove it's a rhombus because it could be a kite and I didn't even notice. So I've got to prove it's a parallelogram first. Hey, what formula am I going to use to show that my diagonals are perpendicular? Just like we did with the sides in the previous problem, we want to use our slope formula. But again, make sure you identify what the diagonals are. So let's take a look at a problem for a rhombus. Prove that a quadrilateral with vertices is a rhombus. Now, I'm going to go back to definitions. I tend to use the definitions easier because, again, if I want to use the uh, diagonals, I got to prove it's a parallelogram first and then work with the diagonals. So I'm just going to use the idea that it's a rhombus. But first, I need to also show it's a parallelogram. We don't need to use my slopes here because remember, also in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. And since we're working with that idea of congruent, I'm going to use that part. So I want to find the length of AB, the length of BC, the length of CD, and the length of AD. So go ahead, calculate those distances to show that we've got a rhombus here. Okay, so we did all our calculations. Again, make sure you have all the appropriate things. I showed that I put my points in for every one of these, okay? And then I worked my way through. Be careful with some things. A lot of people, when they see negative four squared, they punch in negative four squared in the calculator and get negative 16. Be smarter than your calculator. Know that squaring a negative always gives you a positive. So watch out for those little mistakes. In all cases, you should get every side of this comes out to square root of 17. Again, I need to see your work. Don't just go, oh, yeah, if that's it and it's going to be a rhombus. I know they're all the same thing. Prove it to me. But now that I know that, I can now say, looking at this, all sides of A, B, C, D are congruent. I can look at that and see that all of the sides are congruent. Therefore, A, B, C, D is a rhombus because a rhombus has all congruent sides. So it's very easy to prove it's a rhombus. It, it almost comes out the parallelogram by itself. So if I had to use the diagonals, now I got to prove it's a parallelogram first. Okay. So that's really all we've got going with this. Uh, there are the two new shapes. Remember, rectangles, you want to show consecutive sides are perpendicular after you tell it, say it's a parallelogram. For a rhombus, I want to show that all sides are congruent. Therefore, it must be a um, rhombus. Okay, you've got some problems to do on a, a cami, a few questions to answer, and then a couple problems just like this to do. So show all the work. Uh, you can write it on the screen. You can use your finger. You can use a, a stylus if you want to. Uh, if you want to try typing your answers, you can do that too. All right, see you next round.